Hello all, my name is Lokesh. I am working as assistant professor in department of ESG, MIT Mysore. Today we are going to discuss on advanced communication laboratory which comes in seventh semester of electronics and communication engineering. The subject code for this particular lab is 17 ECL 76. What is this all lab all about? We just see the overview of this laboratory. Look at it, this is an advanced system laboratory which covers designs and verifications of the concepts of modern communication systems. For example, we go with QAM, FSK, PSK, MSK, BASK and all the things can be studied which operates in the range starting from, you can look at this electromagnetic spectrum where exactly it starts from megahertz. For example, if you go with a PSK, it starts from kilohertz to up to gigahertz frequencies though all the three different frequencies are going to be learnt in this laboratory. That is, we are going to study about radio frequencies which, uh, which is going to be in the kilohertz frequencies that we are going to learn with respect to ASK generation and detection, PSK generation and det detection and remaining things. When come with a microwave, we are going to study the microwave generation by using crystalline oscillators and it related things and we are going to examine the components present in microwaves, something by the name attenuators, oscillators, ring oscillators, resonators, those things are going to be studied. That is, in terms of gigahertz frequency, we are going to learn it. Apart from this, we are going to learn an experiment on something by the name antennas, where exactly we are going to go with again microwave frequencies, then we move up with optical fiber communications, that is, the bits are going to be sent through the optical fiber and it is going to be received and error rate can be checked. Those are all things are going to be learnt in this particular laboratory. Looking at it, uh, on a broader perspective, this laboratory you are going to comprise of three different technologies. One is optical technology, the second is microwave technology and the existing digital communication technology. All the three things are going to be present in this. What are the things we do have in our laboratory? We have something optical fiber. One second. Uh, optical fiber trainer kits, we have digital communications based trainers, modulation and demodulation kits and we have microwave workbench, microwave components and we have an antenna trainer kit. So this is we are going to do with respect to hardware perspectives of the experiments. We have something by the name software perspective also. We do simulation with respect to MATLAB which is a proprietary one and we go with Scilab and Octave. These are all things we are going to do in this lab. Then with respect to facilities, what do we have in our lab? Uh, by looking at it, uh, we can have, we have a multi-purpose lab station with the comprises of function generators, oscilloscope, regulated power supply and we have something by the name microwave sources, power meters and we have SMA connectors, attenuators, microstrip, directional couplers, resonators and we have microwave workbench, a complete setup is going to be seen. Then we have optical fiber, trainer kit, transmitter and receiver where exactly we use the fibers to communicate it. Then we have digital modulation trainer kits. As a software, supporting software, we have MATLAB assembling. Uh, we are going to generate NRZ, RZ poles and simulations with respect to BSK and PSK waveforms where, by using Symlink, MATLAB Symlink and we have Scilab where exactly the block processing is done by using XCOS. Next, by looking at the syllabus of this particular laboratory, we are going to have 12 experiments out of which 8 are comprises of hardware and 4 of software. Okay. First, we go with the digital communication techniques that is we are going to check with TDM, ASK, amplitude shift keying, then frequency shift keying and phase shift keying are going to be generated and detected discreetly. Discrete components are used to do this experiments. Then we move up with the next class that is we are going to make use of antenna technology. Antenna kits are going to be there where we are going to realize the dipole and the Yagiuda antenna. The printer circuit boards of antennas will be present where exactly we transmit the signals and we receive the signals. Then we have optical fiber kit as, as I told you it consists of transmitter and receiver which we are going to identify some of the losses that is propagation loss, bending loss and the numerical apertures are going to be evaluated in this experiment. The next part is going with the microwave completely microwave frequencies that is we are going to check the wave guide length then power then we go with the attenuation by using microwave test bench experiment then we make use of the components and we are going to observe what will be the coupling and the isolation characteristics of those particular components are going to be studied. After learning all this uh, we go with the simulation experiments uh, we do this by using block processing in a MATLAB symlink, symlink uh, where we are going to generate RZ and uh, 
non return to zero and return to zero signals and off sinusoid and raised cosine pulses are going to be generated and evaluated. Uh, apart from that, we are going to generate uh, pulse code modulations, uh, the modulation schemes by using block processing and the demodulation schemes and getting back the original signal by filtering process and all. We are going to learn that. Then we are going to implement the QPSK transmitter and receiver. As it is a block processing, we just replace the blocks and we are going to evaluate it. Then QPSK transmitter and receiver path, we are going to have the constellation diagram for it. Uh, a very beautiful concept we are going to learn there. And apart from this, uh, we are going to learn about uh, DPSK waves. This is about the syllabus that we are going to study in this laboratory. Next, the first experiment that we are going to study in this lab is TDM. That is time division multiplex axing multiplexing by using uh, two or three waves. What is this two or three waves? We make use of uh, signal generators. Uh, with the help of that, we generate uh, sinusoidal signals and we put it into the modulated block, then we modulate it. Then the, de the modulated waves are given to the demodulated wave and we are going to observe it. Let's see how exactly it's going to happen. Um, the apparatus required for this is uh, we're going to make use of uh, CD4051 Texas ISIS, uh, which is a uh, which, uh, which consists of a 16 pin IC where exactly the seven inputs are going to be given. The, these input ports are IO. It can be act as input and as an output also. Then we make use of signal generator, regulated power supplies. Um, to have an output screen uh, in a time analysis, we go with the oscilloscopes. Uh, then we need to make use of capacitors, that is 0.1 microfarad. We need to use breadboard and the connecting wires. These are all the components required to evaluate this particular experiment. Uh, Let's uh, look at the theory perspectives of this tedium. What exactly this tedium? How it is different from the different multiplexing, other multiplexing techniques? Uh, we have other multiplex techniques, something by the name wavelength division multiplexing, frequency division multiplexing, time division of multiplexing, and frequent and uh, and some others are going to be studied. How exactly is going to be happen? Here, by looking at these blocks, you can analyze it. Uh, this uh, GIF represents how exactly the multiplexing and demultiplexing, that is selecting of signals are going to be happen. Um, first, what we do is we make use of signal generator and we are going to input the waves to it. Uh, say some pin number three, five, six, we are going to input sine wave, square wave and pulse wave to it. Uh, these, wa these signals are going to be given to CD4051 IC where exactly this do a multiplexing and demultiplexing action. Here, in the first part, multiplexing is going to be got and we will get a signal here. That is a modulated signal. This modulated signal again will be given to the same IC, that is uh, the other one, this, the adjacent one, where exactly this modulated waves are going to be demodulated and we are going to have see that particular things in the oscilloscope. Okay, these are all things that we are going to practically do it by using the discrete components. Uh, we'll have a separate video for that and we're going to have the analysis for this. Then, what are the applications of this particular experiment and what are the things that we need to learn uh, to go for the, all these experiments or say some this laboratory. The things that we need to have is the prerequisites for this particular laboratory is you need to know much about digital communication that you're going to learn in a fifth semester. Then you need to learn about microwave and antennas. Then you need to have a good knowledge on optical communication networks. Okay, these are all the prerequisites that you need to study. So when come for the tedium, what are the practical applications of this? You know it. Uh, this particular tedium are going to be used in cellular radio communication, satellite accessing systems, uh, GSM, that what we use now. And this was used in the earlier and the isolating technology that is PSTN that is public switch telephone network, they were using it. And we, this can be used by something by the name Sonnet. Sonnet is uh, synchronized optical networking. Okay, these are all the practical applications and the very important application is it's going to be used in digital audio signal mix mixing. Okay, these are all the practical applications of this. M division multiplexing. As we all know that multiplexing stands for segregating of many number of input channels and getting a single output channel that is multiplexing. What we do here is it is called time division multiplexing axis. So here, here multiplexing is done with respect to the time slots. So these are all the theory we saw in the previous presentation. Now what we do is we are going to look into practical perspectives of it. The practical perspective consists of I told you earlier we are going to make use of IC by the name CD4051 IC. Okay, we just look into the kit. This is a kit which consists of 
8 channel time division multiplexing and demultiplexing trainer kit. What we do here? In a discrete components, what we do is we are going to get 4 different types of signal generators or 8 different types of signal generators say sub consisting of sinusoidal wave, square wave with respect to different bandwidth that is T on and T off and we can go with the triangular waves, we can go with the pulse all of these different are considered as different senders like 1, 2, 3, 4 up to n and these are multiplex to got a multiplex tedium signals. How we do with respect to this particular thing? This particular block is called signal source where we use signal generators in discrete components. Likewise, this particular slot represents sinusoidal wave, this represents the square wave, this represents square wave 2 and we have a triangular wave. What we do here is we are going to connect these four pins to these green pins by using patch cords. We make use of patch cords. We are going to connect it, this into the IO channel which I told you earlier this CD4051 IC consists of seven different types of input output pins where exactly I can demultiplex and multiplex the things by using this IC. This where exactly you can see the CD4051 IC. So likewise we are going to connect the different waves. Now I am going to connect square wave 1. How will you change the width of that particular square wave? The width of the square wave can be changed by using these particular knobs. Then triangular wave. Again, I can make use of these patch cards. I can short it and I can represent the plus 4 which gives you the 8 inputs things. Then these things are fed to 4051 IC that is CD4051 ICs. Then we are going to get a modulated wave from this particular slot okay how do we see this we can see this by using digital storage oscilloscope or normal oscilloscope connecting this to positive end and other end connecting this to negative end this should be connected to your this should be connected to your oscilloscopes now how to power up this particular thing this can be powered up by using the 9 pin db Okay, this will be a power supply unit. Okay, we can make use of this to main power supply that is 230 volts AC. Then this converter gives you, this will gives you the plus or minus 12 volts to particular kit. You can observe here that this is a 9 pin DB. Okay, this 9 pin DB will be connected to this particular slot of that. Okay, then now I got the modulated wave. How to get the demodulated wave? Connect this modulated signals to demodulated block. I told you earlier CD4051 acts as a demultiplexer also. The same pins we can observe. For example, in the first slot I can get what? Sinusoidal wave, rectangular 1 or square 1, square 2 and the triangular waves. If I would have shot all these four, again I would have get sinusoidal, square 1, square 2 and triangular waves. This is how we are going to realize the TDM by using the kit and by discrete component. In the discrete components what we do is to observe these output what we can do is we can make use of 0.1 microfarad capacitor shorting from that to ground that is this pin to ground and I can observe the waveform. This is how we are going to realize it. In the next video that is in the coming time slots I can just show you the exact working how exactly we are going to generate the things and related activities. Thank you. Good afternoon. We are going to learn about time. Good afternoon. To the advanced communication lab. Uh, as I told you earlier, uh, we are going to generate the TDM wave by using this particular kit. So, I said you earlier this becomes your signal source okay what I do now is I connect the sine wave to the first slot of CD4051 again the square wave to the second slot 
square wave with different bandwidth and the triangular wave to the slots. So after this what we need to do is we need to observe whether we are given the correct input or not. So this is our DSO. So we take the crocodile clips of that. Uh, so what I do now is I just ground this by making use of patch cords. Then I go with the second one positive to your the first signal or I can directly connect it you can observe the sine wave there that we are giving the sine wave for the first slot then you can observe the square wave of equal t on on t off then you can observe the square wave of different t on on t off then this triangular wave so what we do now is we are going to give this to our CD4051 IC and we are going to observe the modulated wave now. Okay, I just connect one patch cords and I put it on that. You can observe the tedium wave there which comprises of sine, square and triangular waves. So we just compare these things uh, by taking the second channel of your DSO what we do now is just uh, observe the window there now I am plugging to the input so switch on the channel 2 you can observe there the component present in the TDM wave. Likewise, just observe for square, square of different bandwidth, than the triangular wave. Okay, this is how we can generate the TDM wave. Okay, as we see that we have generated the TDM wave by using this slot. Now we give this multiplexed output to get the demultiplexing outputs. So what I do now is, this is a TDM wave that will be connected to the demultiplexing block. Now what I need to do is, I need to check whether I am going to get sin, sinusoidal wave in this particular slot or not. Okay. So again apply the same procedure. So, just observe there, we have applied a sine wave here in this particular slot and we got the sine wave with some error, some sort of error. You can just check out by using the measure where you can observe the amplitude of that particular wave, the frequency of that particular wave and the width of that particular thing can be observed. Likewise, we check for the second slot. In the second slot, we can just check with the square wave. Okay, then we go with, just check the square wave there, apply the measure there, you can observe the width of that particular thing, then apply for triangular wave. This is how we are going to do the multiplexing and demultiplexing of tedium waves.